This Power Hour is focused on using touch math with students who rely on augmentative devices. My name is Jenna Hill. I'm a professional learning specialist with touch math and an educator, educational consultant, and trainer. So I've had a lot of experience with children with autism in particular who needed speech devices in order to be able to communicate and do things that um, would contribute to their life skills. So um, one of the things that we begin to focus on right away when it comes to trying to incorporate math and more specifically touch math into the students um, practice and how they're learning and still able to be able to function um, and learn through their device. So instead of this slide actually first, let's take a look at the device. So lots of students these days have a device that looks very similar to this one that you see, definitely with a very similar screen on the device, even if the device is very different because there are so many and they are upgraded every year, you will see a tiled screen where there are buttons that the student can push. At the top is where they show the groups of words that the student may choose to use. So if it's in regard to people, they would touch this one. And then when they go into that next screen, it may have some familiar people that they're working with, like maybe their teacher's names, mom, dad, brother, sister, of course, those people are there. Then they have a button, of course, for questions, common questions that they may need to ask. Um, they have social, a, a tab for social questions. Um, what is your name? How old are you? Things like that. And of course, places. So these are the ones that typically come on the device. And then there are also usually the abilities to be able to add new groups. So that's where we would add a new group and we would possibly name it touch math, or we will possibly name it math. Um, on some other devices other than this one, you're able to upload pictures of images. So this is where I would go back a couple of screens to this one. And we would really wanna try to make sure that these images of our touch points and our numbers get on the device. So um, we would get that picture there after all of those are put into their own button. So we've gone into the touch math group. And then when that loads, we've got each of our images here. So nine touch or nine of our numbers and their touch points. Past that, you would want to try to figure out the different ways that you want to um, introduce the touch points to the students. So there's a couple of options with using the device. Um, one of them we can start with is counting the touch points and recording the counting with the number. So for example, if we're assigning this number to that particular group, the, the student would tap the number two and the recording would say one, two. So then at the same time, the student has the number in front of them and they're tapping on those touch points as it's playing to show the correlation between, you know, what they're hearing and what they would normally say while they're counting touch points and what's in front of them. So that's a way to, you know, get them going with the touch points and learning the touch points. Um, you can sort of do it in another way by showing the student these cards, tapping the touch points and allowing the student to put that number on the device. So sort of opposite. Um, seeing if they are connecting with um, those touch points and numbers in their heads and then being able to produce um, the desire to put that number in and then it to, you know, say it out loud. So that sort of be the opposite direction. And then for an addition problem, we would have the student tap on all of the touch points after they've learned all of the touch points and we've got them good practice with that, they would touch on the touch points of an addition problem the same way as we would count all of the touch points. And then they would enter their number into their speech device. And then it would say the answer out loud. So 
the fact that a student is working on a speech device is not saying that they can't still do math or still do counting or still work with touch math. Um, let's move to another slide I'd like to show. When we come to one of our uh, teacher guides, there's always a huge set of vocabulary for the unit vocabulary, also a smaller group for the module vocabulary. So then taking some of those numbers, I'm sorry, some of those vocabulary words and adding them to the device as well could be helpful with connecting to the math problems. So for example, um, backward or subtraction, putting in a symbol that represents that and then the word is being said. Um, taking these words and adding in, them into the student's device so that they can be used and sentences can be created to represent their answers and for them to be able to ask questions that are related to the math that they're learning. So we'll wanna take it really, really slow. Vocabulary would be huge. When any student receives a speech device, they are typically introduced to the vocabulary before it's on their device. So that's something that we would wanna do as well. Sort of test some of these images out with the vocabulary and see if it's something that is relevant to the student, see if it's something that um, they are connected with and motivated to use. So that's a good start for your vocabulary creating it, creating a really great motivation for them to want to use the vocabulary, use the buttons, use the images. Let's see. And then also we have an app that I think is really great because it actually says the numbers out loud. So in addition to the speech device, another way to introduce the touch points and really get them going with some of the addition problems and maybe subtraction problems, um, would be in, in number concepts would be to introduce them to the touch points on the app. It's very interactive and uh, they're saying the numbers out loud. So it, it's in a lot of ways connected to the way that a speech device would want the student to operate. So this is a great one for introducing those touch points. And then also there's another one that transitions into addition. There's also greater than and less than. And one of the things to remember is that our students that are using speech devices are not necessarily cognitively uh, incapable of doing this comp computation. In a lot of uh, instances, it really is um, a different kind of um, need that the student would need a speech device. It doesn't always connect to you know, some sort of inability for the student to do to do this kind of processing. So we want to go ahead and challenge them with it and see if it's something that um, we can find success with. Moving forward, um, we want to make lots of notes in terms of how each vocabulary word and image is working for that student remove some of them, add on more. And then as the student progresses with the various teachers, as well as their speech pathologist staying really connected to making sure that we're making sure that all of the words are very functional for the student. Um, any questions?